Hey, welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today, I want to bring you another portable showcase featuring Carlos, CR7AUS. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Real quick before we get going today, I've got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into this. First uh, image here that you're looking at is one of his, I believe it's three antennas. Uh, this is a nine to one antenna that he uses. And nine to ones kind of have some advantages and disadvantages. Uh, nine to ones are great for putting up uh, when space is limited. You don't need quite as much real estate as you do with an in-fed half wave or a dipole, depending on frequency. Downside to a nine to one is they do require a tuner to use. They're not resident on any given band without a tuner. In Carlos's case, though, that's not a problem at all. I'll show you that in just a few minutes. The next image here, he's got uh, his antennas laid out, or at least two of the three laid out. Over on the right-hand side, you'll see the simple dipole. Uh, dipoles are always great antennas. Uh, and resonant for the band you've cut them for. And then we see the 9 to 1 uh, unin here and the other wire that goes with those. It looks like he's got a couple of different lengths of wire that he can use with the 9 to 1 as well as a counterpoise and uh, then a roll of coax. Along with that, he uses the Tactical Mini fiberglass push-up mask from Soda Beams. And guys, let me take a quick second here to sidetrack uh, just a bit. I got to give a huge amount of kudos to Carlos for his photography. He's obviously a professional or an advanced amateur. This is an absolutely beautiful image, uh, as well as all of the others in this setup. But uh, we're sitting here looking at a fiberglass mast and some tent stakes on a backpack. And uh, he's made this a very interesting image. Well done, Carlos. Looking at uh, this case here, one of the things he's done is he has made different modules for his setup. This particular Pelican type case houses his radio. Opening that up, we get to see that it uh, houses the G90. Uh, we can see that it has a battery. Uh, right here, we've got the, uh, this is a uh, SWR antenna analyzer. We've got a antenna up here, which is a really kind of cool antenna uh, made by, I believe it's DX Patrol. I'll leave a link to that down in the description below. It's very similar to the TN07 IMD109 that I use, uh, but this one's available in Europe and might be a little bit more cost effective if you're in Europe to purchase this one uh, versus purchasing one from TN07, paying the international shipping. Uh, if you're in the States, definitely check out uh, TN07.com. Uh, over here in this pocket, we have some miscellaneous items um, that you'll see more of in a minute, such as the microphone for the radio. Next image here shows a bit more of an exploded view when he's pulled some things out. Uh, you can see the rest of the wire for that antenna underneath uh, where the radio uh, was sitting on top of it a minute ago. Of course, the coax that we saw in the previous image. Here's the uh, antenna analyzer, and then we have a battery down here uh, at the very bottom of that image. And this is everything pulled out of the pack. You can see uh, the microphone and then some extra cables uh, that he had in, uh, in that little miscellaneous compartment and it looks like he's running a 6.6 .6 amp hour battery with this setup. Now one of the cool things about keeping your stuff modular is you could grab this one box right here and go out and work a summits on the air or parks on the air activation uh, with voice carrying only this one particular box. If what you're going to be doing that day requires digital then you could take a look at his second module. Again, this is in a Pelican-type case. 
uh, but it is a smaller box here. He just doesn't need as much room in this particular case. You'll see a couple of uh, various ports on the outside for uh, different things, whether it's power or cat control or whatnot, going between the uh, computer and the radio. Opening that case up, you'll see that he has integrated uh, up in the top lid here, he's integrated a seven inch touchscreen. Uh, so instead of using a tablet and a hotspot on the Raspberry Pi, he just integrated this into the case itself. Removing the foam from the case uh, exposes a Bluetooth keyboard and trackpad. Now going ahead and removing that keyboard, you can see the primary uh, components that's housed in the bottom of the box. There's several things going on right here. We've got the Raspberry Pi 4 sitting up on top. Uh, looks like he's got a USB to serial adapter here. I believe in his email he said this was for cat control of the radio. One thing that I'm not certain of and maybe he can leave it in the comments below. These two wires here, this yellow and black wire, it appears that they are connected to the GPIO pins on the Raspberry Pi. And then uh, it's hard to tell because it's a little out of focus uh, down on this end. Um, but it, it looks like they might be uh, tied into one of these two external ports. I'm not sure what he's doing with that, uh, but I'm kind of curious of that. Uh, Carlos, if you're watching, uh, please leave a comment down below. In addition to the Raspberry Pi, he does have a battery bank. Uh, that's this little black box down here on the bottom. Uh, so that powers everything in the Pi. He also has an SDR uh, down here connected up that he can use to monitor uh, 2 meter and 440 uh, communications. One thing to note here is he does run uh, all of his cables through snap-on ferrite beads. And that can become uh, really important with the Raspberry Pi to reject any radio frequency interference. Uh, last but not least, it's a little hard to tell. We'll see it in another image. But this is a USB GPS unit right over here in the top right corner. There's another look at the box before he's pulled uh, some of the components out. You can see that GPS right here. One other thing to note, it looks like he has added uh, the screws and then coated them with something. I don't know if that's tape or some sort of glue or what it is. But you'll see each of those screws are, are one screw in each of the four corners and that allows him to set the keyboard on top without letting it get into the components underneath. So very nicely done on the construction of this box. There's a look at the entire setup once uh, it's pulled out uh, everything that we need and connected up. Here's something interesting uh, is these connectors that he chose to use. These are, um, well, the, the name escapes me right now. These are used in the uh, music industry quite a bit for connecting up audio equipment, something like microphones. And I, I just can't think of the name of those right off the top of my head, but he has uh, modified those to use with his ham radio setup. So uh, interesting use of those connectors. Uh, then we can see the G90 sitting over here on the side. Looks like he's monitoring 14074. I believe that's the FT8 frequency for 20 meters. Looking at the back of the rig, you can see the various connectors and the way they interconnect between the cases and then also into the back of the radio. One more close-up look of the G90 and a look at uh, the screen fired up and running FT8. You'll also notice that he has an HT sitting back here in the corner. So in addition to having HF communication with the G90, he also has uh, two meter and 440 communications with the HT. All right, guys, well, there you have it. I hope this gave you some ideas for your portable setup and a big thanks to Carlos for sending this in. We'll see you guys on the next video. Until then, 7-3.